Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about programming languages. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what is the best programming language in software engineering? Well, that's not a loaded question or anything. Um, so assuming now that I can answer this uh, and I can make a fair assessment, which is of course impossible because the best is a very subjective thing. Uh, I'll give you a disclaimer first and foremost. And the disclaimer is going to be that the languages that I would suggest to you are just languages that I completely unemotionally have come to realize are usually the best choices for the thing that you want because there is no such thing as one language that is just universally the best because there are some languages who are simply not designed to do certain things and some languages that are and we can simplify the problem by saying that let's talk about you know, low level programming system levels development, and then we can talk about web development, we can talk about mobile application development, we can talk about machine learning. There are like these sorts of flavors of ways that you could work. And since most of the work that I do is in web, I can talk about web, of course, more extensively. Uh, but uh, I've done work as a mobile developer and I've done work as uh, well at this point are quite a few things actually but the way that I see it guys is that the problem with saying that one language is better than another is is that there is this category of software developers who will always get very emotional about software development because they are they care about the subjective nothing type of things like an example would be all the go people will tell you that go is the best thing and it's eating the world etc etc because it's performant and like when you actually ask them about it they don't have any good reason as to why they feel the way they do they just, they just love the language it's the same thing with the ruby people or php people or so forth and so forth because if you look at the actual numbers of how go is being adopted for the most part it's it's almost ridiculous how little it's being used. There are a lot of hyped people who will use it for no other reason than that it is hyped. They have no other real reason behind it, but that's enough because people are emotional guys. It's the same reason why people hate on say Java for no reason other than that they've heard that it's like what? Slow language? when if you go and check the actual performance numbers one of the um, I th I'm not sure what the numbers are now but one of the fastest web servers that we have for example is a Java server because it's written in a ridiculously optimized way that is unpractical for everything uh, but it's there so it's it's a, it's a silly question for me to or rather I, I just don't like having this conversation with people who can't objectively say that one thing is better than another, then sort of motivate with real strong arguments why it's better. Because the performance deal, you can always throw that in somebody's face. And you never ever really have proof of this. And the same thing goes for syntax or like these small language features or like all this nonsense that really doesn't matter whatsoever because it does not matter that, for example, you have go routines. Why does that matter? It does not because the, the thing that you are doing is literally threading. And that is not a unique concept to go. Just as like a PHP doesn't have exclusive rights for being a simple to use web language or Ruby has a you know a simple to use uh, like language like the syntax is beautiful etc so that all these nonsense things I I really don't want to get into these sorts of things so like just save your breath if you want to talk about that uh, the way that I see it is that there are certain qualities that a programming language will need in order to be considered good for the thing that is going to be used uh, for the thing it's going to do. So one of the things that is very important is the language has to be accessible to a vast majority of software developers. 
The reason why that is very important is because you cannot scale a software company on an arcane language that nobody understands. As Haskell has proved that a hundred times now, at least. It's never going to become the big language. And so is Scala is also probably never going to get there either because you cannot build a foundation of a company on a language where most people don't really understand how it works. Just as we say to people, you don't or you know, don't pre-optimize and don't try to be clever because it's very rare that you're going to be clever. It it's for that exact reason. Most software developers guys are not going to learn functional programming just so that they can reap these sorts of benefits that are there in functional programming. And if you think about it, some of the most powerful, most money-making, most like whatever products in the world, most of them actually are not using functional programming. So what is the motivation to use functional programming? What is the real reason that you could make, I don't know, a company such as a Google or Facebook that sort of own, practically owns the entire planet. Well, not really, but you see what I'm saying. What, so that, do, do you think that you're going to make more billions if you used functional programming? No. No sane person would think that. And so that is one of the biggest criteria that it's accessible to people. The second criteria is that it meets the needs that you have of the company. And so in web, for example, what is the primary problem? in web development? Well, it's very rarely performance. Because most languages, no matter which language you pick, is going to be performant enough. If Twitter can, can become a multi-billion dollar company on Ruby on Rails, I think they started with, they, they switched over to Scala later, so you don't worry about it. I, I'm not saying that Ruby is the best language in the world. Uh, but it is possible to do that, just as I know for a fact that PHP is used by one of and several of the biggest companies in the world, Facebook being one of them. And I've also worked for a company that has the exact same stack and makes billions, billions and billions and billions. Works just fine. And in that regard, I argue that programmer velocity is more important. So accessibility, programmer velocity, and that you know the language is actually going to be able to build the thing that you want. And to me, the only language that fills all those criteria in web is going to be JavaScript. It is the best uh, web language there is. Uh, the reason very simply being that if you want to make a website today, a modern day website, there is no way for you to meet the requirements of the market and do it without JavaScript. You're going to need it on the front end, and the reality is that you can use it on the back end, and there's actually a big benefit to using JavaScript across the entire stack. You will be have access to more developers, like more in the workforce than you can possibly imagine. Like there is more JavaScript developers than there are any types of other developers. You, uh, with TypeScript, for example, a lot of the scalability issues and so forth basically go, uh, go out the window. There's really nothing you cannot do with JavaScript. There is one exception these days that I sort of mentioned to people, but it's also like a very, it's a very corner case type of thing where uh, you might, if you do high precision mathematics or something like that, very spe specific or niche, it might not be the best thing. But in my opinion, JavaScript is the best web language we have today. All other things can include, include like literally everything else you can uh, think of, I have considered. And I'm not necessarily saying that that makes every other language a bad choice. Uh, that's not at all what I'm saying. I'm simply saying that the benefits of using JavaScript versus the consequences and benefits you get from other languages is like nothing. If you're running Docker containers, if you're running like uh, a modern sort of cloud setup, there is really no benefit to using, say, Java, C Sharp, or whatever other uh, compiled language that you can think of, because the, the, the only thing you care about is the personal productivity debuggability and personal uh, like, uh, uh, develop, like the development speed of the teams when you're running things in the cloud etc etc like it's all sort of at this point it's abstracted to the point where you're running everything in a container anyway so you don't really gain any benefit from having something else it's just code that is being executed and the language is sort of inconsequential but what you really don't have access to is a gigantic pool of software developers what you really don't have access to is the fastest development speed that you can possibly gain. 
which is the main thing that matters the most when you do web development. And that is something that the only, only JavaScript is going to be able to give you. It is there is a no competition here, in my opinion, in terms of like the best web language. We can talk about other languages for like embedded, and we can talk about C, C++, and we can talk about Rust now sort of actually making headway here, and more. I actually see more of the bigger corporations and even my own government actually looking into Rust for like their embedded systems and uh, things like that, which is pretty cool, I think. I can't really speak for if it is the best or not, because I don't do a lot of embedded systems development. And it's the same thing with machine learning. I mean, I use TensorFlow JS, or like, so I mean, I use JavaScript for that as well, but that's mostly a personal choice. But the mo a lot of people are using Python, and we can talk about whether that is because it's the best for that thing, or it's simply because most of the academic world is using Python as due to culture reasons rather than that it's the best option, etc. etc. But that, that's going to be my answer. So what I want you to take away from this is that there is, in my opinion, no other objective choice if you, if you, if you just consider the overall benefits of all the languages that you have. The default choice for web development should, in my opinion, be a TypeScript, a full TypeScript stack. And you mean you don't have to run Node on the back, and if you have like concerns about that, you can run Deno, which is sort of coming along now as well. It's not exactly what I would like it to be, but it's getting there. Uh, JavaScript is the world's most uh, popular programming, lang programming language. No discussion. It's It's been that way for the last five-ish, ten, almost ten years at least. And I don't think that that's going to go anywhere because, as I said, the, it is the language of the web, and, la and the web is the main uh, source of uh, revenue and source of like work for the entire industry. And so, if you want to have the highest personal productivity, because no, nothing is going to, in terms of like just writing code and working fast, nothing's going to beat a scripting language. And then on top of that, if you use TypeScript, which I hope that you are doing, you have a type system, which is the benefit that you get from languages, say like say Java. And I can tell you guys, I've been working in Java for years and years and years, and I will pick TypeScript over Java every single day. Not because I don't like Java, it's simply that TypeScript gives me basically the same things. I don't really have anything that I feel like I'm missing in TypeScript, and I still get the type system. And when you, that, that's sort of the point that I'm making, that there is really no rational reason to use something else because practically everything you want is already as part of the JavaScript ecosystem and once you've learned it you will be able to work faster than in any other language. There are nice to haves for sure not saying that there's not a personal preference here and there that is gonna like slip in because there are things that I really wish that JavaScript did better for example the debuggers and all that good stuff uh, would be very nice if we could, because I mean the the this, the debuggers, the um, like the debuggability of say C sharp and Java are like the best I've ever like. I love it, love everything about it. Not so much in Java, JavaScript. But if we talk about personal productivity, finding developers, uh, finding the li necessary libraries and like the ecosystem and all of this sort of stuff, there is really no, in my opinion, competition at this point. It really comes down to if you're picking other things, it has more to do with you rather than that there is like a logical really strong reason to do it unless you're doing something extremely specific unless you're working in a company that has already settled on another stack because that's a whole different discussion but if we're really going to go down the route and saying best programming language for in this case web I don't think that there is a competition here it's really down to personal choice and very specific use cases have a great day